And we're back. I'm here with Hallie, Brian, and Sarah. Let's get into it. What a weekday. Love it or leave it. During a three hour long space on X, Jesus, formerly known as Twitter, <laughs> George Santos predicted he would be kicked out of Congress. I know I'm going to get expelled when this expulsion resolution goes to the floor. I have done the math over and over. (laughs) (laughs) I hadn't heard the laughing. It's really something. And Santos knows a thing or two about math. He invented algebra. (laughs) But our boy George isn't going out without a big, beautiful splash. Within the ranks of the United States Congress, there's felons galore. There's people with all sorts of shysty backgrounds and all of a sudden, George Santos is the Mary Magdalene of United States Congress. First point, <laughs> felons galore. Mm-hmm. Incredible drag name. Yes. He he makes, George Santos, ha- it, he's a star. He just is. <laughs> he's a star. Felons galore. That's a wonderful turn of phrase. It's well, like he, he said it as if he was introducing someone. He's like, yes. in Congress, there's <laughs> felons galore. <laughs> Yeah, it's like a star you go to buy really big, weird underwear. I also think that Mary Magdalene is the gayest biblical reference you can make. What? So we were talking about this yesterday. So what does he mean when he says Mary Magdalene, like, uh, cast out because he likes to fuck? Is that sort of the gist? Yeah, sort of. Yeah, the, the sexual um, exile. Uh, but I, again, giving him self airs. Like the, one of the more fabulous biblical uh, figures. Right, like traditionally considered like a, a whore, a prostitute, yes, yeah. like Mary Magdalene. Well, I think he fancies himself a whore, but really we only know he likes OnlyFans. It only goes one way. Mm. Yeah, he's a he's a, he's a a client. Yeah. Are, are you an eye shysty? Is that what he's saying? So it's interesting that I... I is the he word. allowed to say shysty if he's lied about being Jewish? It's almost like being Jewish. Right. Well, <laughs> so I did. Like, so, yes. I mean, I th- when I heard shysty, yeah, you know, my, mm-hmm. my, 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 my spidey sense was tingling. <laughs> <laughs> and, but so it it is like you can see that, like, he has that. Re- like, it's so funny. Part of the thing that's amazing about George Santos is he's doing all of this in a gay voice. Yeah. And I, I really like that. Like, he calls people pussies which is so weird to hear from him. I want to see Michael Guest, the chairman of ethics, put his resolution. I, I might have, matter of fact, I think he should be a man and stop being a pussy and call the privilege on the, on the damn motion. Pussy isn't usually said with hard palate. It's, yes. it's usually glottal. It's usually like pussy. Yeah. And here it's like pussy. And yes. It's like, ah! Yes. Oh. Well, it's not usually in the gay. It's not in It's not in a gay voice. Like it's almost like um, yeah. gay voice is a tonal language, mm-hmm. you know, like Mandarin. And like <laughs> it's, the word pussy just doesn't fit inside mm-hmm. of that that style. When he says shysty, I was like, oh, like he could be a reality show star, but he could go he yeah. could go QAnon. Like he could go full anti-Semite. It's possible. Also, it's like, well, you know that that's why you're in Congress. Like, it's not like a suddenly a reveal. It's like, yes, yes, that's that's why you're there for the first place, you know? Right. Like, that's he knows he did it. Yeah. Like, he knows he's guilty. I looked up who Monica Matthews is, which is the show that he's apparently on right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, that because he did it on Twitter, right? Yeah. Uh, uh, Monica Matthews latest podcast. Here's the title. Pending tsunami, it's all coming down. Are you ready? Economy, government, border agent tells us we are being invaded. So that's that checks out. But the so so one of the things that's in this ethics report is if you remember, there were all these stories when we first started to come to understand that George Santos was not who he claimed to be, that he had loaned his campaign tens of thousands of dollars, I think north of eighty thousand dollars. And he was also unable to pay rent on an apartment that was several thousand dollars. And so it didn't make sense. Like, wait, he's a business person that can loan this amount of money, but he'd also been unable to pay rent like this doesn't add up there was no loan it was a lie that like he pretended to loan his campaign eighty thousand dollars so that he could raise money from real donors because his campaign looked real and legit because there was enough money on the books then he just started paying himself from the real money that came in to pay his rent to go to OnlyFans, to buy hermes to go to sephora whatever and he completely fabricated the whole thing and he knows that and he knows that what a legend. Yeah. It's incredible. I know. It's, it's incredible. Crypto, it's crypto 101. It's, well, it's funny that his strategy for running was the same as like a barista trying to get tips where you just put a dollar in the jar yeah. already and other, yeah. every, other people like, are oh, like, oh, well. I'll put a dollar in the jar as well. It's very, it's very Hollywood. It's very like, hey, like 
how do we get Meryl to do this while well, convince her that mm-hmm. Amy Adams is doing it? How do you get Amy Adams to do it? Tell her that Meryl's doing it. And you just lie to both of them and hope that it works. And sometimes it does. Sometimes it does. I want to miss him. Yeah. He, well, he's not, I don't, going, he's he's not, not going, going anywhere. anywhere. Oh, <laughs> We're going to have George Santos. I think it was Mitt Romney that said it like that. There's something just not quite right about him. Like mm-hmm. there is something like. It's it he that moment when he laughs about being expelled like he could kill like this is a, this guy <laughs> oh, could yeah it's a dark laugh yeah it's, allegedly this is, this, <laughs> but there's something deeply so wrong with him there was a there was an article about romantic comedies once that I can't find but about how um, Hollywood moves on uh, from like leading women too quickly. And like they're not gonna like like there'll be an incredible performance in a rom com and then they won't be in the next one and I was like but I wasn't done with her yet <laughs> like we weren't done we're not done with this is a stupid are Meg Ryan yes yeah like we're just not done with George Santos yet no you know we've not reached the final chapter of his story and that's exciting that's exciting to think about. The resolution to expel Santos was filed by Republican House Ethics Committee Chair Michael Guest following the release of the committee's report alleging Santos used campaign funds on personal expenses ranging from rent to OnlyFans, in addition to filing allegedly false campaign finance statements. Amateur shit, said Clarence Thomas, as several nude billionaires (laughs) removed their masks. If expelled, Santos would only be the sixth congressperson ever expelled from the body. The previous expulsions were three Confederates and two members of Congress who were convicted of federal crimes. So be careful if a beautiful woman with an ill-fitting wig tries to get you to join the Confederacy. It might be George Santos. (laughs) You want to expel me? I'll wear it as a badge of honor, said Santos. I'm through with the insanity of this place, said your worst roommate while packing up his whippet supplies and leaving behind the untrained pit bull he brought home without asking anyone. (laughs) Shut up. (laughs) I didn't say anything. I didn't say anything, Ryan. I didn't say anything about bringing an untrained dog. He wasn't a pit bull. Wasn't a pit bull. Nope. What was he? Cattle dog. Mm. Oh, yeah. Because you, because you had, because you knew that you would had so much pasture for the dog to, yeah, to roam. Yeah. Israel and Hamas agreed to extend their four-day truce, which would have ended Monday by an additional two days. Okay, the hard part's done. Now we just have to keep this going for infinity more days. The extension would allow for the release of at least 20 more Israeli hostages in addition to the 50 freed as part of the initial truce agreement and came just before the Israeli flags and IDF bracelets my dad ordered from Jerusalem arrived. <laughs> <laughs> Your dad with like little live strong. I, <laughs> I don't know. I, I, we were at a restaurant, and both of my parents are on their phones, and it's like we talked about this. This is not screen time, but whatever. And all of a sudden, my dad looks up and he goes, "Oh, good, they've arrived." What arrived, Dad? The Israeli flags and IDF bracelets from Jerusalem. Holds my gaze <laughs> to see what I'll say in response, and I was like, "What do you want? What do you want me to say? What do you want me to say, Dad? How much do you want me to? What do you want? You want to get into it? You want to get into it?" I see you're not wearing one of the bracelets. No, well, they just arrived. I oh, think they okay. arrived to Florida from Jerusalem, which is, I think, like as far as a a route that Israeli flags and IDF bracelets are currently traveling. I imagine <laughs> it's one of the most heavily, <laughs> heavily trafficked. There's like an route. indent in the ocean. From yeah, the from, that's that's where those are coming. That's the route for those. Is things. that the only jewelry your dad owns? Yeah, multiple bracelets is funny. <laughs> I don't. I don't even know what it means. I guess it's it like really a stack is like bangles. Yeah. <laughs> He's shaking wherever he goes. The announcement came a day after President Biden told reporters that it was his goal to extend the truce in order to get more hostages released and more humanitarian aid into Gaza. Well, my actual goal is to lay down, but all these people keep hauling me out to this podium, said Biden on Sunday. (laughs) Biden went on to say, we'll continue to remain personally engaged to see if this deal is fully implemented and work to extend the deal as well. Listen, as someone who's been engaged personally... Sometimes it helps, sometimes it doesn't. (laughs) Elon Musk traveled to Israel on Monday, meeting with Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and touring a kibbutz where dozens were killed during the October 7th Hamas attack, as if that kibbutz hadn't been through enough. Musk broadcast a conversation with Netanyahu where he called the visit to the kibbutz jarring and said he'd seen footage of the massacre that he found troubling. I think I speak for all Jews when I say, sounds good, no further questions, keep up the great work. (laughs) The idea that, like, this, this guy, this billionaire who has vast power over satellites, car companies, social media platforms, does not believe the world exists when his eyes close. Like, I think that that's great. I think it's terrific that 
he does something anti-Semitic on social media and then uses his access and resources to go personally see the devastation of one of the one of the most deadly terrorist attacks in the history of Jews on planet Earth because he needs to see it personally. His personal eyes on this is important to him and to the world. It's really valuable that Elon Musk thinks that like he should like parade around like a visiting dignitary as if this has anything to do with him. Like the the like the audacity and like narcissism and self-centeredness of the kind of person that's like, oh, I did something anti-Semitic. I get to go with the Israeli prime minister to a fucking massacre to prove how much I care. Like, that should not be accessible to him. It doesn't make any sense. He doesn't deserve it. He doesn't belong there. Who the fuck does this guy think he is? I cannot stand it. My only um, hope is that he, fortunately, he is having enough kids to form an army that will rise up against him. Like, he will be right. stopped by his dozens of offspring i like that he thinks like pepsi is gonna say oh he visited the kibbutz like we're, we're back on the ads well, right. let's just give him a fig leaf right like so that if they want to come back they can point to this and say he's fine now i guess so i don't like morbidity tourism period he's acting like he's like when the president visits the 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 place where a tornado hit to talk about the importance of federal aid reaching that place like he's acting like him walking around and seeing it is of some value it's like it's like a, 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 a like a kabuki. It's like a it's the it's a kabuki performance of caring and uh, and concern and I, I don't know action. Right. He he runs the tornado factory. That's the yeah. problem. He runs the tornado factory. Right, so can you believe the tornado did this? It's like well, but yeah, you work at the factory. <laughs> you actually help. You make more tornadoes. Um, in my mind, he, when he's visiting the kibbutz, he's also like topless, like he is in that Ari Emanuel picture, like he's kind of just like wandering around, like he's on a yacht. Oh, I hope that that's not the case. I kind of hope it is. It's also an extension of the just do my own research mindset. <laughs> yeah, it's like oh well, I can't God. possibly trust the news or anything that any of these experts have said. You got to go see with your own eyes. Right, right. You can trust me, Elon Musk, because I went there and I'm telling you that it's real. Well, I think it's like I'm glad you pointed that out because it, it's I don't think it's a coincidence that. Just after this trip concludes, he posts a Pizzagate meme based yeah. on false reporting uh, to draw suspicion on that. So it's like he is attempting to prove that he's not an anti-Semite after he has, first of all, removed a lot of barriers for anti-Semitic conspiracy theories and hate to spread on the platform, m amongst all different kinds of hate to spread on the platform. He personally expresses sympathy for a vile, you know, toxic, anti-Semitic a uh, uh, conspiracy himself uh, then goes in towards the kibbutz to to deal with the fact that there's been a ton of fallout, but immediately shares an, a, a, a a different, also quite anti-Semitic conspiracy theory. Though his specific reference to it wasn't. It is part QAnon is has anti-Semitic uh, uh, components to it. So he's regardless of his like kind of performance of not being anti-Semitic, he has zero. <laughs> he's learned nothing in a larger way about what he is doing and his own information diet and the kind of behavior he's modeling. So sorry, anyone who's defending Elon Musk online or suggesting that because he makes good electric cars, we should excuse his other behavior. He learned fucking nothing from this trip. And the fact that he gets to have conversations with the right wing prime minister of Israel on Twitter spaces doesn't prove anything about him. Doesn't do anything. And where all that came from. You feel better? No. <laughs> All right, let's switch back to uh, the uh, very exciting 2024 Republican primary. Uh, Chris Christie said on Sunday that Donald Trump deserves blame for the rise in anti-Semitism across the country. With a wry half smile and just a hint of a mischievous glint in his eye, Christie went on, that's why we're not calling you Donald Trump anymore. Oh, no, we're going to start calling you Donald Hitler. <laughs> <laughs> He can have that one. Listen. If he's watching. That's pretty good. Yeah, give it to him. That's pretty good. You I just, will say, though, if your only Jewish friend were Jared Kushner, you might be a little anti-Semitic, too. Hell yeah. Oh, yeah. You know? I'd be like, yeah, they must all be like that. Said, <laughs> <laughs> said Christy on CNN State of the Union. Well, look, when you show intolerance towards uh, everyone, which is what he does, um, you give permission as a leader uh, for others to have their intolerance come out. And so, uh, you know, intolerance towards anyone encourages intolerance towards everyone. To which the reporter replied, is that so, you fat fuck? <laughs> I have to say, like, I, 
Chris Christie's great now. That's good. That's good stuff. Well, he shouldn't be president. He should be a first grade teacher. Oh, I don't think so. As a, someone whose first grade teacher ripped up uh, a card that my that oh. I made for my mother because I used the wrong paper, you oh, need the right temperament. Oh, okay, this is explaining a lot. So you've thought about this every single day since it happened. Well, wait a minute. How bad was the paper? Yeah. <laughs> Basically, I I because I had not followed instructions, I had used the wrong. I used the scratch paper, not the official white paper for the card. So she ripped it in half, and her name was Mrs. Johnson. And then they, that, that was all of their names. She's married to the Speaker of the House. And then, oh my she, God. then, so she was my first grade teacher. And then when we were in second grade, she, they switched her to third grade, which I think made sense. And then I was terrified I was going to get yeah. her again, but I didn't. I got Miss Bergstein. There was a lot of that going on <laughs> when we were younger. Oh, yeah. A lot, of, a lot of ripping up paper for no reason. It's like, I'm seven. I don't know what's going on. Like, please help me. <laughs> I didn't tell my mother for like a year. And then she didn't care? No. She was like, well, what am I supposed to do now? <laughs> you have to go to the school and fight the teacher. What Give her mean? a paper cut. Punch her in the back of the head. Mrs. Johnson, though, she did that thing that, that teachers were doing in that era, which is um, they they she was she she did the there were teachers were doing this i don't know that they still do it where they Uh-oh. teach classrooms about racism by on some random day like dividing the kids oh, yeah. based yes, on like hair that. color yeah. or eye mm-hmm. color and then like but not letting she never let on mm-hmm. she like i think like she kicked out the brown eyed kids or i can't remember but i got kicked out of the class well you have to be mean to the majority of kids to make that whole exercise not be horrible Right. Like you have to like the brown the brown eyed kids have to be the ones that you're like punishing or like second class because I feel like I was in the hallway with one kid. I feel like things I don't know. I don't know that she implemented you it successfully. You went to Aryan High. I don't know what to say. You went to Aryan High. Yeah, that's right. I went to yeah, that was um well this is a divergence. Was that in Greenport? Where was that? No, it was in Woodbury. It was in Syosset. Mm, there you go. Do you ever have to do that thing uh the Nasarima? What's the Nasarima? Did you guys have to do the Nasarima? No, it doesn't sound familiar. It, it was like a, a social studies exercise where like you'd read about the Nasarima people and like all their like crazy like customs and like it, and then oh, no. Nasarima is just America backwards and it, and, it, and where where are the the others uh, mm-hmm. and it's like a lesson in like uh, you know judge, judging uh, the practices and customs of other peoples. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. No, we didn't have the Nasarima. Oh well, this is why I'm so um, loving. Yeah. No, that's why. <laughs> Uh, huh. That's why you're that. That's That describes you. Yep. Yeah, interesting. In a true social poster over the weekend, Donald Trump claimed he was seriously looking at alternatives to replace Obamacare. For example, I've still got plenty of room under my golf course. <laughs> 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 President Biden highlighted that post in an address on Monday saying this. And my predecessors once again, God love him, call for cuts that could rip away health insurance for tens of millions of Americans in Medicaid. They just don't give up. But guess what? We won't let these things happen. I am confident, Biden went on to say, that America will come together and make sure we don't allow Donald Trump to return to power and cut health care, ban abortion and destroy our democracy unless sometime over the next 11 months I don't lift my foot enough on one stair. God love him. He's looking God good in him. this video. He Every looks time good. I see him, and I'm like, all he right. He looks good. Okay, That's our guy. Okay. That's our guy, and we love him. Yeah, we are not looking saying. at the same thing. That he is looks not good. No, he <laughs> looks <laughs> great. Up, Ryan. He looks great. He looks, he looks great. He's a hot old man. Look okay, for, that the, color for the edit, space. can we sub in any other picture? No, right? he looked. That's the picture. He looks this good. This is the best he's looked in a while. He I looks don't know good. He's that's a strong vertical. He's not tilting any he's direction. Not tilting. He he's got tall. through the sentence. He's still tall. The tie is good. I, I'm not, I don't know that I've seen that still tie, or if I haven't recognize it. He's, <laughs> he's still, still tall, tall baby. Uh, being tall is worth a lot in this country. It really he's is. He's tall. It really it's is. a good tie. I actually really like that tie on him. What do you like about it? I think it's a it's a it's a strong makes stripe. Him look tall. It's a, it makes him look tall. I I like a red and blue stripe, or is it red and gray? Either way, it's like it's working. The whole thing is working. He looks good there. Yeah, I mean, we'll see how it he all goes. He goes with the flag. Look at him. Does He's no pr- one eat a banana around him? Right? <laughs> Does that peel could just drop out of your hand so <laughs> easily? <laughs> it's a jump. <laughs> oh, I see. Yeah, because of the peel, because people slip on banana peels. Yeah. yeah. Not a thing that actually happens. Well, we'll see. In real life. Not frequently. Uh, on my Hinge profile, on the prompt, one way to get me to fall for you, I wrote, put a banana peel in front of me. That's cute. This guy. I want to break your heart. I have seen that a lot of times. Oh, oh. damn it. Cut that. Yeah. Oh. I didn't I, Hack. I didn't steal wow. it. Wow. I guess I'm just an original. That sucks. That does suck. 
That sucks. I'm so sorry. Is your like personal motto, it's always wine o'clock somewhere? I guess Ooh. not. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, it's really not. I guess it's really not. <laughs> Meanwhile, Trump continues to threaten to deploy the military within the U.S. if he returns to power, including using it at the border and to police American cities. The principal constraint on the president's use of the Insurrection Act is basically political, said one legal scholar to the AP. Presidents don't want to be the guy who sent tanks rolling down Main Street. There's not really much in the law to stay the president's hand. There's only one thing we can do. Keep that president's hands distracted with hot, fresh Big Macs. <laughs> Trump has been saying this more and more frequently, and the AP spoke to legal experts and national security experts about what limits the president's ability to use the Insurrection Act, and sadly, it is not much. And the Brennan Center has written about the need to reform the Insurrection Act, but there's a line in that AP story that says the president's use of the Insurrection Act is not reviewable by the courts, and I really, like, we got to stop using, uh, got to stop giving Trump ideas. Uh, and And just, like, that's quite an assertion. I think sometimes in the way we talk about presidential authority, it's like we talk about the president's authority as being vague, ill-defined, and in some sense limitless. Like, And this runs all the way back to when there were tons of debates during the George W. Bush administration about John Hughes, like a unitary executive theory, the idea that the president is this sort of just all-powerful figure that sits atop the executive branch. But it's continued, and it's very frustrating when the analysis of presidential power is that who can say it's really up to whoever's in charge, which I think is not fair or true or and no way to think about it. It's collectively up to us to limit it. But then when it comes to judicial authority, they're quite open to putting in the story a an emphatic statement, not in the voice of an expert, but as a fact that the president's power is not reviewable by the courts. And like, let's all button it up, you know, let's just button it up. I'm not a lawyer, but neither were the people that wrote the Constitution. You know, some of them probably were. No. Yeah. In a sense. But they were also just like in a sense, <laughs> like that was their job. Some of, them were, some of them were just shopkeepers with lead poisoning. So it's like, you know, we all get to read it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a document for all of us. It's not up to some, as George Sanders would say, pointy hat wearing ivory tower dwellers. You know, now I'm using it correctly. George Santos used the term incorrectly. Do you think it's better that we have microplastic poisoning versus lead poisoning? Hundred percent. Okay, great. Hundred percent. Cool. I'd rather I'd rather um, hormonal imbalances that have lasting but hard to define repercussions for our health than lead poisoning, where you see butterflies and then have no judgment. You know what I mean? Yeah, but you're not uh, like living your life aware that you have no judgment. You're like, I have lead poisoning and incredible handwriting, and I'm a founding father. Yeah, you're very confident. Yeah. About your bad ideas. Yeah, but we our hormonal imbalances lead to much better dance music. That's a good point. First Lady Jill Biden has chosen the theme Magic, Wonder, and Joy for this year's White House Christmas decorations. The First Lady explained she wants to capture the heady mix of emotions one experiences after surviving a German shepherd attack. <laughs> <laughs> Said the First Lady, each room on display is designed to capture the pure, unfiltered delight and imagination of our childhoods, to see this time of year through the wondrous, sparkling eyes of children. Oh, and don't worry, in one of those rooms somewhere, we stuck one of those holla candelabras or whatever in case Doug shows up. Holla candelabra. Holla candelabra, I like that. I like holla candelabra. That's the drag name. Holla candelabra? Yeah. Pretty good. Mm. Pretty good. He, has, he owns the Tornado Factory. Yeah. That was good. Yeah, he it does. Was good. Former President Jimmy Carter traveled to Atlanta Monday for Rosalind Carter's memorial service despite being in hospice care. So if you happen to see him at Magic City throwing 20s, please let him do his thing. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy Carter, Rosalind Carter. I'm sad. Remember that photo where they were so tiny and the binds were so Hell big? Yeah. Love that picture. <laughs> Someone explained why that happened, and it was interesting to, to look at it. Just I, it was like a wide angle lens, and they're like, it, well, why it created that effect. I like, though, that it's like, you can have that effect explained to you. You can understand it, but you can't <laughs> stop seeing what you're seeing. Yeah. Which is Jill Biden. <laughs> and Jill Biden look absolutely Twelve feet tall. enormous. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, it's it's like it's truly the same technology that allowed them to do uh, 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 what's his name from The Hobbit, like to have like Elijah oh, Wood yeah, yeah. and uh, which the, one the, you main, the main wizard Gandalf. God damn yeah. it, Ian McKellen. Ian McKellen. Yeah, I, he doesn't seem like an Ian. That is yeah. such a bullshit excuse. You just forgot his name because he doesn't seem like an Ian. I wanted to say what does Ian. he seem like uh, um, Richard. <laughs> Gregory. What does he seem like <laughs> Gregory? I'd buy Gregory. Malcolm. Yeah. Uh, 
producer Malcolm. Malcolm. No, but he does seem a bit like a Malcolm or like um, what's like a like um, Rupert. Yeah, okay. so what's a British name? He seems like a Rupert. I had a grandpa Rupert. Really? But it, I found out over Thanksgiving that his legal name was Ruby, which used to be a men's name, but it wasn't by the time he was born. But his mom didn't know that, so he just started going by Rupert. But never changed it officially. But like joined the army and stuff under Rupert. You could just do that back then. Yeah, you could just do that back Why then. Why do you think his mom didn't know that? As... Was it Jew- is it a Jewish name? Yeah, because it was like Ruben. Oh, Ruby. that's what it is. Okay. Paris Mayor Anne Hidalgo announced Monday that she is leaving Twitter, calling it a gigantic global sewer that is destroying our democracies. Classic Paris, always culturally three steps behind me. Jonathan Lovett, find me on threads. <laughs> yes, Brian? No, no, no comment. I am realizing also, like, I've referred to Twitter as a sewer, and I think we're not being fair to sewers Mm -hmm. when we compare Twitter to a sewer. We need sewers. Sewers are an important part of infrastructure. And Mm -hmm. yes, they smell bad, but that's, they smell bad in the service to our society of carrying bad things away and keeping the parts that aren't a sewer quite nice. Twitter is not a sewer. It's far worse than a sewer. It's like a reverse sewer. Yes. It brings it to your home. A reverse sewer, a reverse toilet in your home. Yes. It's a broken pipe. Yeah, it's like you're it's, holding a reverse toilet in your hand all the time. Yes. I'm <laughs> holding a reverse toilet. <laughs> it's, right, just like, it's like that episode of in your face. Love It or Leave It when the, the, yeah. the main backed up and there was there was human shit. Human shit. I always flowing. remember what the best day of my life. Was that when um who, who was that when uh, uh, Adam Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Adam Scott was on yeah. the show. Yes, all yeah. the guests were very nice, but also people you would not want to know that there's <laughs> human shit in your backyard. Yeah. It was humiliating. It was great. I loved it. It was, I, it was such a smile on my face that day. Portland Public Schools announced Sunday that it had reached a tentative agreement with its teachers union, ending a three-week strike. Three weeks, cried members of the WJA and SAG, when they discovered a strike doesn't have to ruin your entire life. <laughs> Pope Francis postponed a series of meetings due to a lung inflammation and breathing difficulties. Pope is smoking that dank, commented Love It or Leave It contributing writer Will Miles. <laughs> and this time it isn't a false alarm, like when the Vatican issued a press release that said the Pope is sick and turned out he had just mastered the kickflip. <laughs> this week's Late Show episodes were canceled after Stephen Colbert's appendix ruptured. From all of us at Love It or Leave It, feel better, Stephen. Okay, he should have fallen back asleep. CBS, call me. I have no organ whose rupture could keep me off TV. <laughs> That's it. That's our last joke. Hey, we oh, did it. We did, did it. it. We did it. Feeling good? I just now I'm thinking about your organs. I'm not. It leathers? I feel fine. All right. And that's our show. See you sluts on Saturday. Bye, sluts. Goodbye, sluts. Bye. Actually, your sewage backyard is like the perfect encapsulation of Twitter because it's sewage, but also Adam Scott is there. Like, yeah. That is Twitter. Don't even-